Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my most anticipated YA sci-fi and fantasy releases for 2022. If you're new, this is the last in a series of videos that I've been making talking about my most anticipated releases for next year. If you haven't seen them yet, I will link them up above. We have one talking about adult science fiction and fantasy. That's been a popular one. I've got another video talking about my most anticipated romance releases for next year. And then I've got one talking about my most anticipated horror, mystery, and thriller releases for 2022. But today we're talking about YA sci-fi fantasy. This category I decided to split up because there was just so much of it. I had like 30 adult titles. I am going to say not all of this is sci-fi fantasy. This does also include retellings. So you'll see some retellings of classic literature in here. I'm, I'm including it in with the sci-fi fantasy stuff. This video is going to be organized by release date, but note that release dates are subject to change. Publishers may change when they come out, but as of the filming of this video, this is the best information that I have. Some of these don't have release dates yet, so I'm going to talk about those ones first, and then we'll move on to January releases. First up, sometime probably in fall of 2022, we're going to get The Ruined by Renee Audier. This is book four in the Beautiful series. I've been loving all the books in the series. The Righteous, which is book three, just came out. Out, I was really into it and it left me with an ending where I'm ready for book four. So definitely going to be keeping my eye on that one. Then we've got a couple of classic remixes or retellings that have dates that have not yet been announced. First up, Anna Marie McLemore is doing an untitled Great Gatsby remix, which I'm very excited for. I think their writing style will really lend itself to Great Gatsby because they tend to have this very sort of ethereal, whimsical feel. So really interested to see what they do with that. Then we're getting a Escaping Mr. Rochester by L.L. McKinney, which is going to be a Jane Eyre retelling, which I am so excited for. Give me all the Jane Eyre content. Definitely going to be keeping an eye out for that one. Sometime in 2022, we're also getting the second book in the Iron Widow series by Sharon J. Zhao. I read Iron Widow this year. Absolutely loved it. One of my favorite books I've read this year and uh, will for sure be picking up book two whenever we get it. Title and date to be determined, but it's supposed to be coming sometime in 2022. Also coming sometime in 2022, no release date yet, is book one in the Luminaries series by Susan Dennard. Susan Dennard is also the author of the Witchland series, which is one of my personal all-time favorite series, and she's starting a new one, which I'm excited to check out. Here's what we know about it so far. In Hemlock Falls, when nightmares rise, only the luminaries stand between humanity and these monsters bent on devastation. Winnie Wednesday knows the only way to redeem her disgraced family is to pass the luminary trials. But when she encounters an unknown monster, she realizes she must also protect Hemlock Falls and her heart from a former friend with secrets of his own. Definitely intrigued and uh, probably going to try to get my hands on that one. January 4th, we're getting a new book from Morgan Rhodes, who's been a very popular YA author. This is Echoes and Empires, the start of a new fantasy duology. In this, a snarky 17-year-old must team up with an enigmatic criminal to cure herself of dangerous forbidden magic. I do have an e-arc of this one, so I'm excited to pick it up. I feel like Morgan Rhodes writes really soapy fantasy, so I think this will be fun. Also coming out January 4th is a book that I'm currently reading. This is In Every Generation by Kendara Blake. It is a new take on Buffy the Vampire Slayer following Willow's daughter and the younger sister of one of the new generation of slayers. So far I'm really into it. I think it's really obvious that Kendara Blake is a fan of the original series and knows the characters and knows how to write them. I think if you're a fan of Buffy maybe give this one a try thus far it's been fantastic. Coming out January 11th is The Bone Spindle by Leslie Vetter. This is another one I'm definitely going to be reading. I have an e-arc of it. It's a queer fantasy that's being pitched as Sleeping Beauty meets Indiana Jones in a fairy tale retelling for fans of Sorcery of Thorns and All the Stars and Teeth. Sold. I am very excited to see how this one goes and I love the cover. We've got some interesting things coming out in February. February 1st, we're getting Castles in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian, author of the Ash Princess series. She's starting a new series. This is a spellbinding story of three princesses and the destiny they were born for. Seduction, conquest, 
and The Crown. I, she does dark YA fantasy pretty well, so I'm, I'm intrigued to see what the early reviews say about this one. February 8th, we're getting Mirror Girls by Kelly McWilliams. This is a really interesting premise. As infants, twin sisters Charlie Yates and Magnolia Heathwood were secretly separated after the brutal lynching of their parents, who died for loving across the color line. Now, at the dawn of the civil rights movement, Charlie is a young black organizer in Harlem, while white passing Magnolia is the heiress to a cotton plantation in rural Georgia. And this involves like a mirror curse that they're trying to break and them reconnecting and talking about sisterhood and white passing. It, it sounds like it's going to be really interesting. A couple books coming out February 15th. First up is Bright Ruined Things by Samantha Coho. This one follows a girl who has only ever lived on this island, living on the charity of a wealthy family who control the magic on the island and the spirits who inhabit it. She longs for magic of her own and to feel like an equal, wants her crush to finally see her. And now that she's 18, she knows that her time with the Prospers, this family she's with, may soon come to an end. But tonight is first night, when this family and their high society friends return to the island to celebrate the night Lord Prosper first harnessed the island's magic and started producing ether, a magical fuel source that has revolutionized the world. With everyone returning to the island, May finally has the chance to go after what she's always wanted. Definitely intrigued. I think this is like a magical version of 1920s is the vibe I'm getting. Also coming out on February 15th is Reclaim the Stars, edited by Zoraida Cordova. This is a YA short story anthology. It's a collection of best-selling and acclaimed YA authors that take the Latin American diaspora to places fantastical and out of this world. From princesses warring in space to the all-too-near devastation of climate change to haunting ghost stories in Argentina and mermaids off the coast of the Caribbean, this is sci-fi and fantasy that breaks borders and realms and proves that stories are truly universal. Definitely interested in this. It's got a great lineup of authors. Obviously, Zoretta Cordova, Daniel Jose Older, Anna Marie McLemore, quite a number of others. I'm, I'm very interested in this. February 22nd, we're getting The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O, oh, another one of these gorgeous fantasy covers. We're getting a lot of them next year. Deadly storms have ravaged Mina's homeland for generations. Floods sweep away entire villages while bloody wars are waged over few remaining resources. Her people believe the sea god, once their protector, now curses them with death and despair. In an attempt to appease him, each year a beautiful maiden is thrown into the sea to serve as the sea god's bride, in the hopes that one day the true bride will be chosen and end the suffering. So people think that the most beautiful girl in the village, who's the beloved of her older brother, might be that legendary bride. But on the night that she's supposed to be sacrificed, her brother goes to interfere, even knowing that that might mean a death sentence. And so Mina throws herself into the water in place of the girl that her brother loves to offer herself and is swept away to the spirit realm, this magical city. So it sounds really interesting. March is a big month. We've got a bunch of things coming out and like three books all coming out on March 1st. First up is another one of these classics remixed that I'm very excited for. This is Travelers Along the Way, a Robin Hood remix by Amina May Safi. This one I think is a sapphic take on Robin Hood, which I am very excited for. I've read from Amina May Safi in the past and I'm definitely interested in this. Also coming out on May 1st is The Book of Living Secrets by Madeline Rue. I love this cover and it sounds interesting. It says, perfect for fans of the Hazelwood, it's a genre-bending page-turner following two girls who transport themselves into the world of their favorite book, only to encounter the sinister alternate reality that awaits them. Very intrigued, interested to read this. And then finally, the other book coming out on March 1st is Gallant by V.E. Schwab. One thing that I don't think everybody realizes is that this is a YA book, and in fact, maybe even a young YA book. In the past, she's used Victoria Schwab for YA and V.E. Schwab for adult titles, but that is now changing. She is using V.E. Schwab across all of her titles. So this is in fact a YA story. It says, a dark and original tale about the place where the world meets its shadow and the the young woman beckoned by both sides. Being pitched as The Secret Garden meets Crimson Peak in this standalone novel perfect for readers of Holly Black and Neil Gaiman. I have this one pre-ordered. I'm definitely interested to try it. Okay, we do have one other book coming out on March 1st. Uh, also coming out March 1st is Edgewood by Kristen Ciccarelli, which is another one I'm definitely going to be reading. I'm excited for this. No matter how far she runs, the forest of Edgewood always comes for Emmeline Lark. The scent of damp earth curls into her nose when she sings and moss creeps across the stage. 
It's as if the woods of her childhood, shrouded in folklore and tall tales, are trying to reclaim her. But Emmeline has no patience for silly superstitions. When her grandfather disappears, leaving only a mysterious orb in his wake, the stories Emmeline has always scoffed at suddenly seem less foolish. She enters the forest she has spent years trying to escape, only to have Hawthorne Fell, a handsome and brooding tithe collector, try to dissuade her from searching. She ends up being drawn to the court of the fabled Wood King and makes a deal for her grandfather's freedom, but uh, maybe gets in over her head. This one sounds great. Coming out March 8th is Lake Lore by Anna Marie McLemore. Two non-binary teens are pulled into a magical world under a lake but can they keep their worlds above water intact? I think there's something in here about the worlds kind of merging in some way. It, it should be interesting. Coming out March 22nd is A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy Lynn. I love this cover. It's so pretty. It says, for Ning, the only thing worse than losing her mother is knowing that it's her own fault. She was the one who unknowingly brewed the poison tea that killed her. The poison tea that now threatens to also take her sister's shoe. Yikes. When Ning hears of a competition to find the kingdom's greatest Shenongxi masters of the ancient and magical art of tea making, she travels to the imperial city to compete. The winner will receive a favor from the princess, which may be Ning's only chance to save her sister's life. But between the backstabbing competitors, bloody court politics, and a mysterious and handsome boy with a shocking secret, Ning might actually be the one in more danger. Very intrigued. In April, I've got one book to talk about. This is Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. This one sounds great. It says, Greetings, traveler. Welcome to the legendary Hotel Magnifique. Your trip to elsewhere begins now. Our offerings include an abundance of delightful enchantments and dangerous secrets, a vexingly handsome doorman with a mysterious past, a ruthless maitre du hotel intent on obtaining power at any cost, a dark conspiracy at the heart of the world's most famous magical hotel, and one girl determined to tear it all down for the sake of saving her sister. Prepare to depart by midnight. Definitely sounds interesting. I think this is going to be a big one they're going to be pushing from Penguin Teen next year. I don't currently have anything in May. I've got one book for June. June 28th is This Vicious Grace by Emily Thiedi, Thiedi? I'm not 100% sure on the pronunciation. Three weddings, three funerals, Alessa's gift from the gods is supposed to magnify a partner's magic, not kill every suitor she touches. Now, with only weeks left until a hungry swarm of demons devours everything on her island home, Alessa is running out of time to find a partner and stop the invasion. When a powerful priest convinces the faithful that killing Alessa is the island's only hope, her own soldiers try to assassinate her. Desperate to survive, Alessa hires Dante, a cynical outcast marked as a killer to become her personal bodyguard. But as rebellion explodes outside the gates, Dante's dark secrets may be the biggest betrayal. He holds the key to her survival and her heart, but is he the one person who can help her master her gift or destroy her once and for all? It sounds very melodramatic, but I feel like it's probably going to be fun. We've got a few books coming out in July that look good. July 5th, we're getting another classics remix, What Souls Are Made Of, a Wuthering Heights remix by Tasha Suri. Yes, please, this cover is everything. Give me anything by Tasha Suri and I will read it. Also, it's Wuthering Heights. I think this is gonna be fantastic. One thing that not everybody knows is that based on the text of Wuthering Heights, it's likely that Heathcliff was a person of color. Um, we don't know specifically from where, but was some kind of a person of color. So in this remix, he is from Asia, from India. I believe, and uh, I think it's going to be great. Coming out July 19th is Young Blood by Sasha Lawrence. It says this is for fans of Vampire Diaries and Dark Academia. Okay. Two queer teen bloodsuckers at an elite vampire only boarding school must go up against all of vampiredom when they uncover a frightening conspiracy on campus. So we've got lesbian vampires and Dark Academia boarding school. Yeah, sure. Sign me up. Sounds good. Last one for July is July 26th. We're getting Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. This is the sequel to Legend Born, which I loved. I'm definitely interested to see what she does in the follow-up, and I hope that it's a strong second book. We'll see. I've got one book for August. August 9th, we're getting Fury Song by Rosaria Munda. This is book three in the series that started with Fireborn. These are among some of the best political YA that we've gotten in a while. I think they're really, really good political YA fantasy with dragons. I am for sure going to be picking this up. 
two books for September. September 6th, we're getting The Sun Mirror Trials by Aidan Thomas. This sounds incredible and I love the cover. Welcome to The Sun Bearer Trials, where teen semi-dioses, I think that's like demigods, compete in a series of challenges with the highest of stakes in this electric new Mexican-inspired fantasy from the best-selling author of Cemetery Boys. I feel like it's going to be great. Then on September 9th, we're getting Blood Like Fate by Lizelle Sambury. This is the sequel to Blood Like Magic, which is a fantastic sci fantasy that came out. It's great. It's dark. It's like very, very interesting. I'm for sure going to be picking up the sequel. And then the last one, I mean, maybe this is kind of obvious, but November 1st, we're supposed to be getting Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. I do follow the Shadowhunter books and enjoy them, and I will be interested in picking up this book as well. So there you go. YA sci-fi and fantasy books that are coming out in 2022 that I've got my eye on. Let me know in the comments down below any of your thoughts on the books I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, tell me about a YA book that you are really excited for in the new year. If you all like this video, it helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.